Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Bithell, Commercial Editor at Raconteur. In this video, we'll be looking at the challenges and opportunities faced by CISOs today and why it is more important than ever to build an organisation full of cybersecurity champions. Modern CISOs are under a lot of pressure and many are facing persistent challenges such as human error, complacency and lack of cybersecurity awareness. Issues that could be exacerbated by AI adoption. However, with the right investment, board buy-in and education, staff can become cybersecurity assets. I'm delighted to be joined by Matt Cook, cybersecurity strategist at Proofpoint, to discuss some of the key themes from Proofpoint's 2024 Voice of CISO report and the part that every employee has to play in their organization's cybersecurity. Thanks for joining me, Matt. Very welcome, excited. So one of the kind of key themes that came out of the 2024 Voice of the CISO report was people being a persistent vulnerability uh, in their organisations. So what are kind of some of the persistent concerns that, that CISOs are facing regarding staff interactions? The report itself, I think we surveyed 1,600 CISOs um, from around the world, organisations about 1,000 or so employees or above. Um, so it was a, a big source of data and one thing that was completely consistent throughout all of it was the vast majority, I think it was 74% of CISOs were concerned about the people problem, um, about the risk that, that unfortunately the people pose the organisation. And that kind of, if you look at it another way, it tells us that, that you know, the majority of CISOs are pretty comfortable over the things that they can control. You know, they know that if they do the basics of security right, they've got their patching programs in place, you know, that they've, they're able to secure the configurations of the systems that they use, they're in a good place. Those are the things they can control. The things they can't control is human behavior and how we interact with some of the risks that we, our employees, our colleagues have to face on a daily basis. That, and those risks can be unknown. Um, you know, we, we don't necessarily know what they are and I think that's part of the problem. So we can't then predict or control that behavior. And do you think that behaviour is kind of more a lack of awareness or is it kind of complacency, human error? Why are kind of employees still not kind of getting this message? Yeah, it's a tricky one. It's really hard to call it error um, because for me, I always think when I hear error, it's like, well, I made a mistake and, and a mistake is something that I kind of knew that I shouldn't have done. Mm. And I don't think we always know that. Um, in the world of cybersecurity, I definitely don't think we, we know that. People are being faced with risks. We, we're doing a really good job of trying to keep as many of the threats away from people uh, as possible but some threats will arrive in their inbox. Um, some threats will, they'll stumble across on the, on the internet. These pose challenges and we don't necessarily know what the risks are of clicking on that link. We don't necessarily know that if we click on that link and put in our username and password, what the risk of that is. Well, maybe we've just given our credentials away to a cyber criminal. Does that matter so much that they've taken over our account? Well, what happens from there? Well, what could happen from there could be a ransomware incident across the entire organization. So the risk is significant. And so one of the challenges that organizations face is just helping people understand what the risks are. Um, how do they educate them? How, how can they change that culture so that, that we can feel a little bit more empowered um, and we know yeah, this could be risky action, perhaps I won't take it. Perhaps I'll just stop and think about it a little bit more before I do. Yeah, I think we all think we can spot it, but actually it's so hard these days to kind of work out whether something is legit or not. In terms of obviously things getting more complex, there's obviously the big topic at the moment is AI, mm. and this is making things so much more complex for organisations. So what kind of pressures are you seeing there for CISOs and for security teams? Yeah, it's, um, it's taking up a lot of thought process from the CISOs um, and the teams at the moment. How, how do we deal with AI as, a, as an organisation? Because AI is fantastic, right? I'm, I'm use the chat GPT all the time. If I'm ever sending a personal email, I'll use that to help me craft it and make it make me sound so much better than I, than I actually do. Um, and those tools are great. And that's what people, we, we, we all like to use those, but that presents risks for organizations if we start doing that at work. You know, if we start to use some of these open source tools or free tools or even paid for tools, and we start giving them work information, whether it's just an email, whether it's data and asking to help them analyze the data, or, or, or maybe we're checking code for the website development or something like that, you know, validating that. We're giving data away to companies that will then use that data to learn from and maybe even regurgitate that data in responses back to other people. And so from a data loss perspective, that's a real challenge. And so we've seen a lot of organizations in the report, for example, um, it highlighted that, that over 50% of organizations now are using data loss programs within their business. And that was up over the previous year's report from, I think it was around the 30, 35% mark. So a big acceleration in data loss programs. 
because organizations realize now that, that, that actually AI is one way that data is going to leak from their organizations and they do need to put some boundaries uh, around that and raise awareness um, of what people can, uh, their actions are, are going to be. That's a big thing for CISOs to have to be kind of dealing with. In terms of kind of who else should be involved, need to be responsible, how have you seen kind of the relationship between CISOs and the rest of the C-suite and the board change over the last few years? It's certainly got a lot better. And the report this year highlights, highlights that. Um, you know, I think it's uh, about 84% in the report of CISOs were actually saying that, yeah, they, they feel like they see eye to eye with the board now. And that's up significantly over the last few years. We saw a lot of CISOs being introduced into the board around the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of organisations went remote, they went much more digital, um, that presented lots of challenges and they needed someone to own those challenges. Um, and the CISOs had to step up and do that. And in many cases now they've, they've maintained that position and they've maintained that relationship. And they're, do they're doing that because they're now talking the language of the board. You know, instead of talking about protecting remote workers and phishing attacks and AI and things like that, what they're actually talking about is the language that the board want to understand. You know, what's the impact to the operation of the business? What's the potential financial impact implication of, of a cyber incident? What's the damage for reputation risk? What's, what does that look like? And so they're translating their world into the board speak and then get, getting the board support ultimately for an, an understanding, I guess, of, of a lot more of the cyber risks that businesses face. Yeah, I suppose it's talking the language of the CFO or the CMO as opposed to kind of talking about the ins and outs of the tech. Yeah, definitely. We see some really, really good examples actually of where the CISOs actually works with them individually and helps each one of them understand the risks that could pay, uh, be faced for their area of the business. Like the CMO, for example, what's the implication to reputation? You know, if there was a cyber incident, if we had a breach, if we lost it, and, and actually playing out those those scenarios. And often as security teams, we, we do these sort of tabletop exercises and we play out those scenarios so that we understand it. But actually playing those out with, with the individual board members and their teams as well, so that they understand what the implication is for their business, can sometimes make a huge difference. Because now you've ultimately got the buy-in and the, the greater understanding across the whole of the board. And, and it's often then a lot easier to get support for the programs that you, you feel that are essential to reduce risk for the business. Yeah, and I suppose making it kind of relevant to each individual is really important at that senior level, but also what about kind of for employees at a more junior level? How can cybersecurity training be made more relevant and kind of something that they will take more notice of, I guess? Yeah, well, that, that support at the senior level is, is very, very key because with these security awareness programs, one thing that, that kind of comes out in the report is, is the focus on culture and changing the culture. You know, it's, it's all very well having security awareness training with like one size fits all. You do it once a year, you click next, next, finish, it's done, you move on to the next thing. We know that doesn't work. What you really need to do is start changing the culture of an organization. And to do that, you do need senior support. The leaders need to lead by example. They need to help drive the, that change. And they'll only do that with that good level of understanding of what it is that they're doing, right? That the risks, how are they mitigating human risks within the organization? And so they'll help drive that program forward. And one of the core components, I think, of that program is, is making sure that, that the education, the awareness programs that we do are, are really, really hyper, hyper relevant to the, mm -hmm. the people. Because that's what we're, we're focused on. We're focused on mitigating human risk, you know, mitigating the risks that, that, that of my behaviors, of your behaviors, of the things that we do every single day that, that might be wrong. And in order to do that, I need to engage with content that is, you know, it's, it's the right type of content for me. It works for me. It's tailored to my demographic. It works in the format that I want to consume it. It might be a poster on the wall. It might be a short video that I can see on my phone on the way to work on the train. It might be actually threat intelligence has identified that maybe I'm being targeted at the moment with imposter fraud uh, type attacks from financially motivated threat actors, for example. So maybe I'm automatically enrolled in, in some of that training um, to, to heighten my level of awareness. There's a lot to change in culture and it. it doesn't happen overnight, but we see some really, really good examples that are led by the, the overall board rather than just the CISO, but being, being led and supported by everyone. And sometimes, I guess, different departments can be quite siloed and they maybe don't work together so well. So how does sort of technology help to, to kind of bring those together and, and consolidation of, of the platforms people have? CISOs are really challenged, I think, with consolidation. <laughs> um, uh, because over the years, we've, we've, we've all grown up with like nice new shiny pieces of technology. And we all love these different like, products that solve these individual problems. But we're at the point now where CISOs are looking at that saying, well, I've got all these different products 
trying to solve all these different problems for all these other departments in the organization and trying to reduce risk for the business, but I've got all these people having to manage that. And that's complexity. And one thing we know now with security is, is almost, complexity is almost the enemy of security. We need these tools to be talking to each other. We need them to be sharing intelligence. Mm -hmm. That example we used earlier, well, if I'm being targeted with a threat, it's relevant to share that with a security awareness training tool so that I'm automatically enrolled in that training. Mm -hmm. And so just having that intelligence sharing, having that conversation going on on the tools makes a difference. So platform consolidation is a big focus area for them. It helps them not only reduce you know, the, the amount of tools that they have to manage. It helps them reduce vendor relationships. Mm -hmm. It also helps them focus, refocus skills. Then instead of having one person per tool and you, you consolidate that down, you can actually focus on some of the other initiatives that you're looking to drive through within, within the security team. So yeah, consolidation is a big play. It makes a difference. Yeah, and I suppose it's just keeping one step ahead of the, the cyber criminals and how they can get in. It is, and, and you know that's our role at Proofpoint, right? It's uh, you know that focus on, I guess, that human-centric security, making sure that CISOs are actually thinking about things from the people outbound, mm. because we know it's people that, be, that are targeted all the time. Um, and we just want to help them stay that one step ahead by you know, using that platform, by sharing that intelligence and making sure that uh, you know, they can reduce the risk for, for the organization. Yeah, makes sense. Well, thanks, Matt. That seems like a good place to finish up. But thank you so much for joining me.